Hey, welcome back everybody and happy new year. Hope we're all having a wonderful start to 2024 out there and we've got increasing confidence for a major winter storm on the way less than a week away now uh, for honestly a big section of the country and potentially areas of the southeast, maybe areas of the northeast, potentially as far east as the I-95 corridor here, which uh, is a place that has been very starved from snow to say the least over really the past couple years here. Uh, so this could be a big time storm for a lot of folks. And uh, again, we're really gaining a lot of confidence that this is going to happen. Now we've just got to pin down who exactly is going to see the worst. And I'll give you my best shot at that here in today's video. Uh, now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. Hit the like button if you like the video and comment. Let me know where you're watching from and uh, kind of what you're seeing out there in your neck of the woods. Um, a couple other housekeeping things here very quickly. Uh, starting tomorrow, I will be back in Charlotte. I'll be leaving uh, the upstate tonight uh, to head back home. And uh, so I think uh, going into really the rest of this week, videos will be much longer uh, as we discuss this storm system a little bit more in depth. And uh, we might even have a couple live streams before the week is over. Just kind of have to play it by ear here and see what happens. Uh, with all that said, though, let's go ahead and jump on into your forecast. Uh, now, starting off with our um, infrared satellite, things are relatively quiet for much of the country right now. It's kind of hard to see here, but we do have a bit of a trough here kind of swinging on through. Uh, that is helping to bring in cooler air out of Canada right now, and that's going to be very important because uh, every little ounce of cold air we can get here is going to be uh, very key in forecasting who sees snow and who sees rain and who sees ice uh, throughout the week ahead. Uh, another thing I will mention on our infrared satellite here is uh, this kind of swirl just off the coast of Southern California. Uh, this is going to eventually kind of swing on through the country uh, going into the next uh, 72 hours or so. And by the time we get to the middle of this week, we could have maybe a bit of a light snow event here into sections of the southeast. And I'll talk about that here in just a moment. Uh, nothing blockbuster there, but again, for areas that don't see snow very often, uh, this could be a quite interesting event for uh, some folks. All right, uh, taking a look at current watches, warnings, advisories, and our radar imagery out there. Again, things relatively quiet. We do have some scattered snow showers this morning, kind of uh, up into the higher terrains of West Virginia, into Western Pennsylvania, and uh, even parts of Ohio. Nothing too out of um, uh, the ordinary there. Uh, definitely could be some slick spots on the roads, though, and uh, make sure you're watching out for that. That's one of the reasons we have some of these special weather statements up for the mountains here. Uh, it's for some black ice. So definitely make sure if you're traveling through these areas, um, I know it's a very busy travel season here, just be careful and uh, you know, make sure you're uh, taking all of the precautions possible. <clears throat> Again, though, outside of there, though, really quite uh, quiet for a lot of folks here to start 2024. But as I've been talking about, uh, don't get too excited because that is going to change very quickly here uh, as we go later on into this week. All right, so let's go ahead and time out the uh, next couple of days here, and uh, you'll notice, um, again, we're going to be in a little bit of a lull, I think, for about the next 48 hours or so before things pick back up. Uh, now, as for this afternoon, again, still some northwest flow smack in the mountains of West Virginia here. Could see uh, maybe another inch or two of snow in those uh, places, uh, but overall, most of the snow is done for uh, most folks, at least again for now. As I move this ahead going into this afternoon and evening, you'll notice, again, not a whole lot. Some uh, potential snow showers in West Virginia, maybe some rain showers try to uh, break out here into uh, kind of sections of the DMV here through the D.C. area, parts of uh, southern Maryland, maybe even a couple snowflakes try to mix in there. Uh, but again, nothing too impactful, and by the time we're getting towards midnight, uh, that's moving on out as this cold air really kind of locks into place overnight tonight. And I think by the time we're waking up tomorrow on our Tuesday, January 2nd, uh, things are going to be quite chilly and uh, likely mostly dry for most folks. Um, I think Tuesday is going to be really quite a nice day with pretty sunny conditions and uh, relatively cool conditions as well uh, for early January. As you can see, this is a Tuesday afternoon and evening not too much ongoing. Now, what I will mention, though, is as uh, we're getting to this point, look back towards Texas here in Louisiana. You'll notice we've got some rain picking up. Uh, this is that storm system in California I just talked about, just off the coast of Southern California. Uh, this is going to track just kind of right along the Gulf of Mexico here. Uh, and with that potential and all of this uh, cold air that we've had kind of being funneled in, uh, we could get a little bit of a snowy event potentially here uh, kind of in the circled area on your map. Now, impacts if this does happen don't look too high right now. And if anything, it'll probably just be some light snow that you know accumulates to the grass and probably not the roadways. Uh, but if that were to happen, that would be Wednesday afternoon, about as far as this model goes out. And you'll notice here, 
Um, and here we are again Wednesday afternoon. We've got the precipitation here. We've got some cold air not far to the north. And hard to pick out here, but a little bit of blue showing up here in central Alabama. Uh, kind of trying to mix in with that uh, green on your map. So uh, that'll be interesting to see here with the storm system. And unfortunately, it's going to be one of those things that we kind of just have to forecast up to the last moment to watch the trends here on the models to see if this can shift any further towards the north and west uh, and to see if it amps any more as well. Uh, one thing I do feel confident with that storm system, though, is it's going to be very rainy along the I-10 corridor, uh, really from Tuesday evening on through Wednesday evening as well. Uh, so again, if you're traveling during those times, make sure uh, you kind of uh, plan it safe there if you're traveling uh, there, again, along of the Interstate 10 corridor from Florida really all the way to Texas. Alrighty, so that's kind of the basics over the next couple of days here. Um, now we're going to have to get into this kind of bigger storm system that we have been discussing for what feels like forever. I've been telling you about this pattern since Christmas Day, uh, and here we are. It's really lining up with just about exactly what I forecasted here. I said going into kind of that second week of January, and sure enough, that's when we're going to likely see uh, this pretty impactful snowstorm. Uh, again, details right now are a bit muddy, but what we do have is increasing confidence that no matter what, a storm system with winter impacts is going to happen. It's just a matter of where does it track, and with that track, uh, that's obviously going to help us uh, better gauge who sees snow, who sees rain, and who potentially could see some big time ice. All right, let's time it out. We're going to start with our GFS operational model from this morning and uh, give you the latest information. Again, this is that Wednesday storm system here right along the Gulf. Uh, with the GFS, as I move this ahead into Wednesday evening, you'll notice, again, look at some of this blue trying to mix in here through southern Tennessee, the mountains of North Carolina, uh, maybe even trying to mix into central northern Alabama. Same story for Georgia. Uh, can't roll out. Maybe some of those flakes try to fly into upstate South Carolina overnight uh, Wednesday into Thursday uh, before eventually that storm system kind of tries to move on out of here. Uh, but bringing behind it, very importantly, another shot of cold air here as a trough kind of swings on through going into our Thursday. Now that's going to set the stage for our next storm system. And you'll notice here it comes kind of beginning uh, to get its act together back out into the Desert Four Corners region, bringing some snow to you folks out there. Uh, eventually, snow through Albuquerque uh, during Thursday afternoon. Uh, Thursday evening, that rain and snow moving into portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, uh, Texas. Uh, and uh, by the time we're waking up Friday morning, again, this storm is continuing to slowly get its act together. Now, I think um, Thursday and Friday will be relatively clear for much along the East Coast, but it'll be cool and chilly. Again, uh, we've got a couple areas of high pressure here. Leftover high pressure from the trough that moves on through Wednesday, but another area of high pressure to the north that's going to scoot along with this low pressure track and help to kind of funnel in that cold air. Uh, down into the mid-Atlantic and into the Ohio River Valley. Uh, now, Friday afternoon here on your map, again, still pretty rainy along the Gulf Coast, but nothing too wintry uh, happening yet. Uh, that's going to change very quickly, though, going into our Saturday. Uh, this is Saturday morning when we're waking up. Again, just one model run, but this is a projection from the GFS. Uh, big time storm system, sub 1,000 millibar low pressure riding uh, right along the Gulf of Mexico, and here comes that high pressure. This is so key to that forecast. How strong is this high pressure and where is it placed? The further south and the stronger the high pressure is, uh, the further south and more robust of a snowstorm we're going to get. Uh, and here it is, the latest GFS right over kind of uh, Quebec and Ontario, bringing in that cold air towards the south to fuel the snow chances with this storm. Uh, and getting into Saturday afternoon here, again, uh, we've got a very strong low pressure over the deep south, bringing potentially severe weather uh, along the Gulf Coast, very heavy rain outside of there. And here's some snowfall breaking out into the higher terrains of western North Carolina, uh, again, Saturday afternoon. And as I move this further ahead into Saturday overnight and evening, we've got an all-out winter storm through the Ohio River Valley, very uh, heavy wet snow up into Virginia, heavy wet snow falling here uh, with again south of there very heavy rainfall, probably a flooding concern, maybe some severe weather. Again, this is getting overnight Saturday and into Sunday of this first week of January. And uh, by the time we get towards midnight here Saturday, again, a full blown winter storm, maybe near blizzard conditions here. Uh, for somebody in the Ohio River Valley, maybe the higher terrains of Appalachia from uh, North Carolina northward. 
And by the time we get into our uh, Sunday afternoon here or Sunday morning, this big time snowstorm cranks up along the East Coast, bringing very heavy snow from the I-95 corridor uh, up through kind of the Northeast before eventually this kind of clears out going into next Monday afternoon. Uh, now again, going to remind you, that's just one model run. I'm going to show you a different one uh, that's going to show you something basically, well not completely different, but different in many ways. And uh, again, I just want you to get the concrete idea here that we don't know exactly where this is going to happen. We don't know the exact impacts. What we do know and what I'm confident in is we're going to have an impact for winter storm. The location needs to really be timed out here, but I think the overall details of what this is going to look like, uh, timing wise and total strength wise, we're getting a lot better of a picture on. All right, that was the, uh, the GFS model, excuse me. Let me show you the European really quickly here. And again, starts with the same story. This Wednesday afternoon and evening, we've got a little bit of maybe some wintry precipitation trying to mix in with the rain here through Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and even uh, the higher elevations of the Carolinas. That moves on through, again, kind of clearing out by the time we get into Thursday morning. And there, once again, is that shot of cold air behind it. Uh, now on the back side going into our overnight Thursday and Friday, here comes that storm system snow breaking out through Kansas, northern Oklahoma, Colorado, and even parts of southern Nebraska here uh, with rain to the south. Uh, now same story, the storm system gets its act together really going overnight Friday into the early morning hours of Saturday. And once again, we've got a strong low pressure right along the Gulf Coast uh, with very heavy rain. Now this is where the European gets a little different, and uh, this is new to the overnight model runs. Uh, this is something that is a bit of a trend here over the past 24 hours or so. Uh, European is much further south here with this low pressure system. Uh, high pressure is about the same place, maybe a little stronger than the GFS, uh, but the track of this low is very different, and with that, uh, we're instead getting a bit of a snowstorm into the North Carolina mountains, uh, eastern Tennessee, Kentucky, compared to areas a little further north like we saw on the GFS. Uh, now this is getting into Saturday afternoon here. We've got an all-out winter storm again into the mountains of North Carolina from Asheville all the way up into Virginia, West Virginia, and back down into the Cumberland Plateau, uh, getting really uh, kind of walloped here by some big-time heavy wet snowflakes, a bit of a wintry mix maybe in places. And uh, by the time we're getting later into Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening, wow, this is... Um, you know, quite the picture to see here. Again, this is still not quite a week away now, but about five days. So uh, confidence growing here and latest uh, European model for Saturday evening has again an all out winter storm for much of Eastern Kentucky, all of West Virginia, much of Virginia, including uh, the DC area and down into the Western North Carolina mountains before eventually this rides up the coast and brings quite the snowstorm. Uh, through Maryland, uh, Jersey, Philadelphia, and um, then eventually the storm system kind of hooks right there and pulls out before bringing really much snow at all towards the Boston area and up through New England. So quite an interesting uh, south trend overnight here with the European model, much like some of its counterparts. All right, one more model I will show you here that's an operational run. The Canadian actually kind of agrees with the uh, European here. I'm going to fly through this one a little bit just for time's sake. Uh, again, there's that first storm the next couple of days. Here comes the big one, though, going into this weekend. Again, much like the European model, further south, bringing that snow areas further south. Uh, and the Canadian has been very, you know, all on board on this idea of a big time ice storm along the I-85 corridor from uh, northeast Georgia up through Greenville, Spartanburg, Charlotte, and uh, kind of into surrounding areas before eventually turning this into a big snowstorm uh, for northern Virginia and through the I-95 corridor up through Boston. Uh, so just quickly showing you that just to show you that we do have kind of some different ideas out there of what could happen here. Now, all of this is going to come down to something very important, and that is the placement of high pressure and low pressure with this storm system. Uh, and our latest GFS uh, ensemble members, I think, do a good job at showing just how much uncertainty we still have. Uh, all these kind of blue circles you see on your map here, these are potential placements for the high pressure, and all of these uh, kind of, uh, I guess, gray circles maybe they are, brown circles, uh, down to the south, those are potential placements of low pressure. Uh, so I've encircled here kind of the range of possibilities, and as you can imagine, with a range this big, uh, that's going to have a big impact on the you know impacts we see. If we, for example, get a low pressure track all the way up here like this member shows, we're going to get a big snowstorm up in this area. If we get a track as far south as maybe some of these members show, we could get an I-85 kind of snow and ice storm like the Canadian shows. So again, just a lot to iron out here, but again, I've said this so many times now, just remember, 
We're still five days away. We don't need to worry about the details right now. Uh, what is important, though, is we're gaining confidence that this is going to happen. And uh, looking at the European ensemble members for the same time frame, same storm system, uh, same scenario here. Low pressure riding through the Gulf Coast, and here's high pressure supplying cold air, even some cold air damming here are on the European model. Uh, now, one key difference I will mention is the European ensembles are a good bit further south here. So uh, this would favor more of a snowstorm, you know, into the North Carolina mountains, up into Virginia, maybe into Tennessee, uh, compared to the GFS model that kind of favors a little bit more of a snowstorm, maybe through the Ohio River Valley, uh, compared to areas further south. So again, those are the details we're going to iron out here over the next couple of days. And uh, quickly showing you, actually I'm going to skip ahead here, um, quickly showing you uh, one more map that I think is kind of an important tool to use here. Uh, this, uh, again, do not look at the snowfall totals here, just more or less look at the general areas. Uh, kind of the higher snowfall totals you see here is where we're a little more confident that we're going to see snow out of this. A couple places to highlight here, I think back towards Kansas and the Oklahoma-Texas Panhandle, a lot of models show some snow out there. Also, a lot of models still do show snow here up through the I-95 corridor. Uh, and specifically into the interior northeast, really, from uh, New York State down through Pennsylvania and up into New England. But again, as I said, uh, you know, should some of these members and some of these ensembles be different or, um, you know, right compared to others, it's going to drastically change this map. So just know, again, as I've said many times already in this video, and I'm going to say it one more time just so uh, you know, uh, don't focus on the details here. Don't focus on exact snowfall totals. Don't look at your Apple iPhone or you know Weather Channel app saying it's going to snow, uh, you know, five to eight inches on Saturday night. Uh, just look at the overall pattern here, and the pattern is still conducive for a winter storm here, uh, potentially in the southeast, Ohio River Valley, and into the northeast going into this coming weekend. Uh, so again, we're going to make sure to iron all that out here throughout the next couple of days, and I'll be here with a video for you every day and potentially even a live stream or two here uh, as we get a little closer to this event going into this coming weekend. Uh, with that said, though, again, hope you're having a wonderful start to your 2024, and I'll see you all tomorrow.